G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, how about that? I said the fear, the fear and greed index uh, was uh, a lot of fear, so the market was likely to go up, and that's exactly what's happened. <laughs> market is now up to 357 billion, getting close to that 360 billion. Still a ways off that nearly 400 billion that we were at, you know, only a couple of weeks ago. But Bitcoin jumped from sort of, you know, 10,000 sort of $200 to $10,800. So not too bad, 3% uh, in 24 hours. Even Ethereum's up, so it's over that $370 mark at the moment. Uh, and most things are in the green. I mean, let's have a look. What's what's the big movers? So Quant, nice 27% pump. Elrond, Loopring, uh, Bitcoin Cash, there you go. So they'll be stoked with that. Uh, Monero icon, so yep, definitely plenty of movers. As we can see, almost everything's in the green at the moment. But we don't want to get too excited. That could turn around at any moment. You know, who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But positive signs going up and the price is going up uh, on individual sort of coins as well. So that's good. You know, not too much has really gone down in the top 100. I mean, Binance coin had a drop of 10%, but it's had a pretty good pump and it's already starting to move up again. So well done. We'll have a quick look at the charts though. As we can see, we broke out of that trend line so we can get rid of this trend line now. It's been uh, null and void. And we've broken against, you know, this was resistance. Uh, and, you know, We'll just have to wait and see where this is going to go. I would like to see it sort of turn around and bounce off here a little bit. I don't want it to just kind of break through like this because otherwise this could be a repeat of this that we just break through and then roll over again. And that's completely possible. Hopefully not. But anyway, we're above the 10,500 uh, and it looks like we're just continuing to go up. So how high can it go? I don't know. I'm going to say that we're going to come up and sort of retest this, you know, 11000 ish dollar range. And, you know, maybe even the $11,500 range thereabouts. Whether we can push through it and then, you know, break this $12,500 level, that'll be interesting. But we can see that that 100-day moving average, that really did act as support. So, you know, I was worried that we we're going to come down and, you know, hopefully bounce off uh, this greater trend line and if not you know worst case scenario is that we bounced off the 200 but the 100 day moving average was enough to do it so good news so far now maybe we just try and get to that 50 day moving average and we start to use that as a bit of support if not this 10,500 i did find some interesting stories out there though today so binance so they are being sued by a japanese exchange for you know not having very good KYC, basically lacks KYC. And what this article goes on to say is that uh, the Japanese exchange was hacked and some of the funds that were taken from there were then siphoned through Binance. And because Binance didn't do very good KYC, they weren't, be out, they weren't able to track down who was uh, laundering, not so much laundering, I guess, you know, they're saying Binance was kind of laundering, but who the offenders were because of their... Again, you know, not very good KYC. So that's very interesting. And they're saying basically Binance uh, laundered 9 million of the cryptocurrencies uh, and that they're seeking compensation for these alleged losses and things like that. Uh, be very interesting to see uh, if they can get up on that. I know that uh, KYC, uh, they are taking it more seriously now. Obviously, this was, uh, I think, back in 2018. Yeah, there you go. 2018, this was hacked. So two years ago. Binance didn't have any KYC back then. I know when I joined up, I didn't need anything. Uh, now they definitely have KYC. Uh, and it's being run through uh, a California-based uh, court, I believe, as well. So, yeah, interesting to see what uh, America will do about that. I mean, is Binance even sort of, you know, obviously they operate in America, but are they based in California? There's a lot of questions going around, you know, where is Binance actually... Uh, located. I, I don't think they have a central location that I'm aware of. I could be wrong and please let me know in the comments down below. But I don't think Binance is specifically based out of anywhere. So that will be the hard part about trying to yeah, chase Binance up. But they've decided to start with the Californian courts. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Another story. All right, so there is a global DeFi alliance going on now. 
So Huobi's Global DeFi Alliance has announced 10 new members, including sector heavyweights, Aave, Curve Finance and Synthetics. Huobi's decentralized finance consortium, dubbed the Global DeFi Alliance, has welcomed 10 new members, bringing its total membership to 15. The new members comprise of DeFi heavyweights Curve Finance, Aave, Synthetics, Balancer, Loopring, Zapra, Zerion, BitPi, Mikey and CoinGecko. They join founding members Maker Foundation, Compound, Nest Community, DYDX and Huobi DeFi Labs to explore cross-border collaboration opportunities and promote the development of the DeFi ecosystem. The Global DeFi Alliance launched one month ago, so it's only brand new, describing its mission as driving collaboration between decentralized finance projects from both the West and Eastern hemispheres. All of the members have greatly contributed to the DeFi ecosystem, and we are excited to be part of the Global DeFi Alliance, said Aave uh, co-founder, CEO, Stunny. Oh, I'm going to butcher this, <laughs> Kulichov. Uh, and what I found really interesting was, we'll go down a little bit here. Uh, basically, Huobi noted that additional DeFi players will be admitted into the alliance over the coming months, alongside representatives of the centralized finance sector. So they're looking at trying to merge the two, and look, that, that, that is what's needed to be done. You know, banks and that aren't going away anytime soon. Uh, and if we can get them on board, it's only going to push further adoption. So this is really good, and they are some of the bigger, uh, you know, DeFi projects out there. Curves massive, Aave is massive. They're the biggest, I believe, at the moment. Synthetics is up there, so yeah, good. I mean, Coin Gecko. I'm not really sure what they have to do with DeFi specifically, but obviously they're a website that's commonly used, and they have a bit of nous and things like that. So good to see that they're all getting involved. Now, lastly, I found this really, really interesting. Morgan Stanley strategist recommends Bitcoin as central banks ramp up money printing. It was not that long ago that banks and hedge fund managers and things like that, much like Warren Buffett, were calling cryptocurrencies basically rat poison and it was going to zero and no one should touch it. And now they're recommending it. Interesting, so let's have a look. Morgan Stanley Investment Management's chief strategist and head of emerging markets has recommended Bitcoin as an alternative investment to stocks amid central banks' massive money printing policies. He says that alternative assets like gold and cryptocurrency could keep doing well while stocks struggle. And I guess the key word is could because at the moment we're still fairly highly correlated uh, to the S&P 500, NASDAQ and that, although we're more closely correlated to gold at the moment. And if there was a big crash uh, of the stock market and things like that, a lot of people believe, a lot of strategists and things like that, believe money would find its way into gold and cryptocurrency. There is a report out there at the moment that uh, MicroStrategy, the big tech company that put $250 million into Bitcoin not too long ago, they're considering putting more into Bitcoin. So again, you know, there's going to be the couple of, you know, early adopters, although they're not that early, but you know, in the big business world, I guess they're going to be considered as early adopters. And then everyone's going to start to follow. And you know, that's what's going to push Bitcoin prices through the roof. How high they're going to go? I don't know. I, I, I don't think it'd be, you know, out of the realms to see Bitcoin, you know, $150,000 at the peak. I mean, don't get me wrong, it could go a whole lot higher and I'm not saying it will go to $150,000. I'm expecting it to go to around that kind of $100,000 mark. But look, it could not go to $100,000. You know, that's going to be a real, it'll be a barrier to break that $100,000 mark. I think a lot of, you know, institutions that will have got in, they will be selling around that $100,000 mark a little bit before, most likely. So trying to jump over that $100,000 hurdle, I think will be difficult to say the least, but not impossible. Again, plan B, I really like uh, his stuff. He says, you know, maybe $288,000 a Bitcoin. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I guess if there's hyperinflation and things like that, then two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollar Bitcoin uh, is not that, you know, not that inconceivable. You know, if it's to do with the hyperinflation, but I think, yeah, the hundred and fifty thousand dollar mark wouldn't surprise me based on sort of today's money. Again, hyperinflation, and again, you could probably double it or triple it. 
But yeah, the $150,000 mark is kind of what I think will be roughly the peak if, you know, if nothing drastic happens before that. But I'm not completely sold that we'll be able to get over the $100,000 hurdle. We'll just have to wait and see, you know. Interesting times ahead. So, you know, again, it's around about $10,000 at the moment. You know, you're getting into Bitcoin now. It roughly 10Xs, you know, in the next, I don't know, 18 months to sort of two years. That's pretty good returns. Now, not financial advice. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen and I'm not saying you should get into it. But I'm guessing if you're listening to my channel, you're probably already into cryptocurrencies anyway. But that's not a bad return in two years. If you could sort of, you know, 10, 10x-ish your money, it could be a lot more. Uh, and look, it could be less as well. So who knows? Do a bit of research, you know, work out, you know, where you are happy to sort of sell at, you know. You just got to be real sometimes. It's unlikely that Bitcoin is going to go to sort of 300,000 or you know even 250,000 in this cycle. Not impossible. I just yeah, you know, I think it's unlikely. I think, you know, my personal opinion is more around that $100,000 mark, probably a little bit before if you want to start selling in the $90,000 area, might not be bad again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I will start to scale out before we get to 100,000. But don't get me wrong, I'm not selling all my Bitcoin or anything like that. But I, but I will be looking to recoup what I've put into it at least. And then, you know, there'll be certain marks after that that, you know, I'll sell, you know, 20% of a Bitcoin here. And then as it gets to another mark, you know, like if it gets to 150,000, I'll sell, uh, you know, 20% of a Bitcoin. If it gets to 170,000, I'll sell another 20% of a Bitcoin. And if it gets to 190,000, then I'll sell another 20% of a Bitcoin and things like that. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I'm not going to sell too many of my Bitcoin. I only have a few Bitcoins, so I won't be, you know, selling too much. But yeah, I may, I may sell you know, a third to maybe 50% of my Bitcoin along the way. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's just my strategy. You gotta work out what your strategy is. You know, you might have a much better strategy than me. Who knows? But anyway, good to see the markets are going up. Stay safe, be kind to one another. It looks like pretty much everyone was on that gain train today. And I'll see you next time.